Welcome, everybody. It's Wednesday, 2 p.m. This afternoon, we are going to be talking with Sean Robbie from Bud and Breakfast. He's the co-founder and CEO out there. But today, uh, we're going to get into the a little bit of weed news first, obviously. Um, Tom from CannabisIndustryLawyer.com and Niggy from WeedNews.co. What's going on? Well, it, it's the big news is that uh, we're gearing up for a push on the Safe Banking Act as soon as Congress returns. And I'm not sure if I'm able to share my screen, but I'll go ahead and try. Um, and I'm gonna pick this one and share. And so uh, that one, I'm not, no. Oh. Oh, yeah, there we go. But anyway, it's conference and lobby days. And those lobby days basically means that you guys can um, stop sharing the screen. Stop sharing everything. <laughs> oh. Where'd you go, Tom? Oh, you're back. Basically means you call and no. then you show up and then you go to uh, lobby the Congress, who will be back from their long vacation, uh, starting in about the two weeks after September 4th, when uh, Labor Day? Yeah, Labor Day ends summer, doesn't it? And then hey, people will be able to be pressured into voting for this Safe Banking Act, which would be huge news. And in two weeks, tune in, because then we'll be able to explain to you how you can call your congressional switchboard and get that action. And the other big news... But I still wearing seconds. the freelance floor shirt. I was how was Hempfest, man? Uh, you tell me you were there. <laughs> yeah, I know, but I was asking you questions. I thought it was fantastic. I, I had a, a, just a great time helping the prisoners tent, and that really is the social equity experiment that you guys have been doing for eight years. You've well, you've been volunteering at Hempfest for eight years, right? Yeah, I've been volunteering, and then for that particular booth, uh, Kristen Floor and her group of friends have been doing it. About just as long, uh, you know, from from hemp fest to hemp stock, which is another fest that used to be down in Oregon, of the same nature. Uh, I mean, that wall that you saw when you walked in. So when you uh, for people listening uh, or watching, uh, we had two tents. One tent we had a wall of prisoners, the people free, and then uh, we had another uh, alongside the the back wall where people who were presently locked up. And then of course we were signing petitions and clemency letters, but. That free wall to me was pretty important because uh, it showed right. it made a difference. You know, those signs were made while guys were locked up. Right. And, you know, yeah, uh, you guys have actually been successful in getting some people freed. Uh, I don't because Obama actually issued some pardons and freed some prisoners. Has Trump done that? Not yet. Well, no, I stand corrected. There have been some conversations for Trump, part of the. Uh, the, the that the Cory Booker the 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 uh, next step program I think that he has yeah, yeah but that's actually really big and then that's part of the other news the federal push that's coming as soon as Sanders and the gang gets back to the hill now I realize he's running for president but his platform is actually excellent when it comes to cannabis prohibition he's going to try to do it uh, through an executive order that you know tells the Department of Justice to stand down and and that's that's big I mean hopefully we can reach out to the Sanders people and see if he would promise to on day one, pardon all the nonviolent uh, cannabis offenders that are sitting behind bars for life. For example, Lance Galore, uh, he's not behind bars for life, of course, but like he's still sitting in prison right now. Well, even when we say life, I mean, can you imagine being a 60 year old man sentenced to 30 years? I mean, that essentially is a life sentence. I mean, That's right. the, the yeah. healthcare is not the best, all the other shit that we got going on back there. No, no, it, it's terrible. But hopefully, I mean, as soon as he if if it is Sanders Trump, that would be something else. But it looks like the polls have Biden leading. And it's, it's still too flipping early to tell. Hey, did you did you see the funniest cannabis news uh, from the week? It was a Florida lawyer who didn't do very well. No, that's it's always Florida. But what happened? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Florida lawyer. Uh, client tells his uh, I don't know, lawyer tells his clients it was legal in their state to grow weed. It wasn't. This was back in 2015. And you know, again, uh, cannabis was not legal in Florida until they passed it in 2016. And then even then, it was still illegal to grow. And it's still illegal to grow. I don't believe there's any type of patient grow in Florida. The patient grow isn't even in Illinois. Uh, it's in, it will be coming soon next year, but only with full legalization. And so this guy told his clients that they could grow weed in Florida and $370,000 in, in damages against the lawyer. And he was disbarred later. Boy, uh, that was some bad advice. And his clients, of course, got arrested by a SWAT team. Well, along that lawyer said, so I just posted a comment in the uh, in our YouTube channels. Uh, 
that there's another one and it could be the same lawyer you're talking about it's somebody that i'm intimately talking to who was screwed by a florida lawyer um same thing uh the lawyer said you're you have the right to do this um but of course he didn't but that lawyer is the uh, uh minority are you familiar with minority no I'm not uh, what's Bernardi? Bernardi has, he's a criminal case lawyer he has done some good work and uh has done some uh 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 pro stories but in the same token you know the, the, your lawyer job is kind of the most ambiguous field in all of the cannabis where you know you got the good part where you're in the business side of contracts where well, there's actually a really interesting thing that's going on in uh, marijuana crime law that I'm working with uh, Jeff Hall in our office. And I'm uh, uh, my company's named Collateral Base. Their company's named Hall, Rustam and Fritz. And um, with the, the hemp laws, there's going to be some interesting content coming on the channel. So like and subscribe and then you'll get notification when we post that video about what the hemp laws have done to uh, prosecutions for cannabis in the United States. There's a, yeah. So what are you doing? What is, what's the, uh, what, what's the, uh, Oh, we're not going to talk about it yet. This is called uh, promotions. Instead, we're going to talk about like the growing problem because you might not have known, uh, how, how many acres of hemp were planted in the United States this year? And oh my God. What, what percentage did it increase over last year? Have you heard that news? No. Oh man. You want to guess like how many uh, acres? It has to be thousands because I mean, you, you're, you're talking, uh, indoor grows, outdoor grows. There's 18,000 acres in Illinois alone. Oh my God. So we're not yeah. millions, maybe? No, oh, no, not a million, but there's 128,000 acres of hemp planted right now. And that is up from 27,000 acres last year. So it more than quadrupled in size. And because of that, uh, another big news that came out of the banking committee, the credit unions issued, uh, issued official guidance saying that it is legal to bank hemp. And then um, because of the, this, this legalization of hemp, there's new uh, projections in the legal cannabis industry out five years. How big do you think the legal cannabis industry, including CBD hemp, is going to be in five years in this country? I thought it was like 150 billion. No, that's more along the 10 years. So oh, okay. like it's going to take 10 years to get up to that. In five years, it's going to be uh, at 45 billion. Oh, shit. By the way. Yeah. Well, I mean, like right now, I think it's only like 15 or 16. And but so you know, if you're going to triple in size in the next five years, it's going to be ridiculous. But I'm not really looking forward to what the quadrupling of the supply of CBD is going to do to the price simply because, you know, that's the thing about when things are the wild west or, or when you have dot-com booms and stuff, then you usually have a bust. But that's a question too, though, because out of that, whatever new hundred thousand some odd acres, is that all for industrial? Is it all CBD? You know, the, the vast free? majority will be for CBD, probably like 75%. You think, yeah, I would imagine. So that's the gold rush. And, and expect right, that's the gold rush. Right. Come, uh, uh, what the end of the seasons, how do you think the market's going to drop when, uh, you know, the, the come winter, well, that's the thing. Like it, it's published on an, on a monthly basis from the uh, the magazines that I subscribe to. So uh, next month we'll come around here in about another eight days, and then uh, we'll get the the new updates for probably they're usually about a month back. So it'll be the the June numbers will come out, and then we'll be able to say like what the spot price is for uh, CBD hemp. I also have those bookmarks somewhere. I should leave that in the description section of the video so that people could follow up on it. But it's going to go down. And so hopefully people will still get the price for the flower that they have expected. But one of the problems with uh, the CBD hemp industry is that it's it's so unregulated, especially in Illinois, that people just um, they didn't spend their money on lawyers when they were getting in. They spent their money on a whole bunch of inputs and seeds. And, you know, they were buying the picks and the shovels and all that. And then now things might go awry and then they'll call me and I'll be like, when did you see my YouTube? <laughs> April, April is hot. Why, why are you calling me now? Look, look there's a, okay. There's a lot of things that lawyers can do. We can't travel through time. We have a very amorphous job and people really don't understand it. And they think if they can read, they can do it. But uh, yeah, yeah, it's, we can't well, travel through time. Being a lawyer with the uh, Illinois infrastructure that you guys have already created really helps you out because um in Lance's case, he tried to get lawyers, but uh, they had him uh, do his infrastructure of like taxes. He was he was taking taxes. He was uh, had a payroll. 
he, he was doing all those things that were trying to be the right thing, but yet right. still, because some douchey cop legally acquired the cannabis uh, the same way everybody else would, turn that evidence over to the feds, he became a federal case. That's just strange. Uh, but, you know, it was a different time. It was a different time back then. I remember the raids. They were a while ago, but they were, and they were far away because, I mean, like, Illinois didn't even have medical cannabis then. And the Robacher Far Amendment, that that's also getting back to the big no news this week is the, the federal push that's coming as soon as recess is over. And you guys are going to help because in a couple of weeks you'll be calling and making sure that you some of you in the area that can show up to D.C. do it. Um, but you'll be able to say, hey, we need to expand that Robacher Far Amendment from medical to all states. And then you're going to see New York, Pennsylvania, New Jersey. Uh, Florida in 2020, if they put that on the ballot, and Arizona ex as well, uh, those could all go legal. And then that might be really, really fast, especially if it's like a, a Sanders administration, which me saying a Sanders administration makes no sense to me. But I can't believe who's the guy in the office right now. Like if I would have been like, you know, when the Trump administration gets out, of, I would have never, ever thought I'd be saying that. Can you imagine if you're in a coma for 20 years, you come out, Trump's president, weed's legal. I mean, what the fuck would you be thinking? CB what? That's what you'd be thinking. You'd be like, hey, yeah. I, uh, Apple? Apple computers is still around? I figured they'd be dead. They were moments away from bankruptcy when I uh, went into the coma. Well, even smartphones weren't as advanced they are now. I no, mean, no, it's flipping watches and everything. And so, like, if your phone's far away, you can just start talking to it and all that other stuff. It's... Uh, Better get out of coma. Imagine being locked up for 20 years. Oh, shit. I got to go for a second. Oh, good. Hey, Lauren, why don't you bring on the guest? All right. Hey, Sean. Mr. Hey. Roby, how are you? Doing well. Thanks for having me. Yeah, why don't you introduce yourself? Well, I'm Sean Roby. I'm the CEO of BudandBreakfast.com. We're an online vacation rental platform for cannabis enthusiasts around the world. Man, that's a pretty cool web domain. Budandbreakfast.com. <laughs> yeah. How did you come by that? Well, you know, I was in the wine industry before the this, and um, I would take people on foodie tours out. My family had wineries out in Napa, and I'd be, you know, taking people through the vineyard, and I'd I'd look in the back, and there'd be, you know, twenty cannabis plants, and I'd be like, whoa, okay, and I just saw it sort of gradually growing back in the. I think it was when Prop Two Fifteen came in, in the early mid nineties, um, just started seeing kind of this steady progression of people coming into California. Cool. Hey, why don't you help us out though? Because not all of our viewers are out there in California or Napa, when you say prop 215, like back in the nineties, I think you're talking about the original OG of medical marijuana laws, right? Exactly. Yes. Wow. And yeah. so like prop 215 legalized medical marijuana in the state of California. It did. Did you guys have to vote on that? Because we had to do it legislatively out here in Illinois. Uh, it was it was voted on. Yeah, there's the a people you know, California like on a ballot, ballot, right? California is the king of ballots initiatives, <laughs> no doubt. Yeah. Illinois, mm -mm. like I've read our constitution, it expressly says no uh, to these things. Yeah. Well, you're coming along, Illinois. Mm -hmm. Illinois is a, you know paving the way in the Midwest. Woo! Yeah, I know, right? We had to get a whole bunch of social equity in there, but. Uh, that's that's going to be interesting to see how that actually plays out. So, what do we do? What do you? What can you do with uh, Bud and Breakfast? So, if I was in the market for it, how would I go about it? Well, you know, you would uh, if you had a if well, if you're a host, you would sign up your place. Whether it's a, I mean, we pride ourselves. We have couches to castles. We have places that are you know a hostel for fifty dollars a night, or you know a luxury estate for thirty five hundred a night, where you could have you know a wedding, a cannabis wedding. That's a big thing now. Um, you know, we're really seeing the full gamut. We're seeing you know you know, lawyers like yourself to mm -hmm. Grateful Deadheads to, you know, medical patients. We're getting a lot of people coming in from draconian states that, you know, have a child with epilepsy and, you know, they need CBD therapy and they come to Colorado or to any now rec state. Um, so they don't have to be looking over their shoulder while they're, you know, giving medicine to their child. So wow. we're seeing a lot of that type of tourism as well as, you know, the recreational tourism hey, as well. Hey, Sean, for, uh, since you're in, international too but even in america like for the uh, medical states are there any houses that are saying hey you know what we're 420 friendly can we be on your thing 
Oh, in the medical states? Definitely. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. And, you know, what we tell hosts at that point is, you know, I, it's it's really a legal matter for them to to put in their description, you know, ask will be asked for medical documentation or perhaps might be or however they want to do it. A, yeah. lot of they, or a lot of places are actually in, in non-medical or non, well, actually medical states are doing CBD therapy as well. So you come and you get a CBD infused massage or, you know, they're finding ways around um you know the, the yeah. locations that they're surrounded by that's awesome wow yeah. so uh you know in a couple months here when illinois goes legal should i just like put my because i i have to split time between downstate and chicago so i, I always have a place that's empty somewhere can yeah, i just uh, list on yours and be like hey uh don't touch the plants in this room it's locked <laughs> but look in this drawer Right, right, right. Well, you know, I mean, you know, we do. It is a trust thing. I mean, we have people now in, in say, California where people are going in and doing full cannabis farm tours where, you know, you get there and they're not trying to hide the plants. In fact, they're taking you to the middle of the field. We just saw one guy in Napa who put up a zip line over his vineyard. And so you're like zip lining and there's the there's the Pinot Noir and there's the OG Kush and there's, wow. the, you know, there's the super. Yeah, you're allowed to grow outdoor like that in California. <laughs> you can get the 25 plant outdoor license there. And those 25 plants can make a lot of cannabis because oh, you man. those those people that grow out there are brilliant and they've been doing it for decades yeah it's the alley of giants you're walking past 20 you know 15 foot yeah. tall plants so. oh my god that's awesome uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that the grapes are starting to get ripped out now. <laughs> the cannabis is going to... Well, I, I thought that was kind of like a new hot thing. That was something that they had at the party, uh, of the after party at uh, Hemp Fest over the weekend. They had these new ca cannabis-infused... These were cannabis-infused sodas. Mm -hmm. uh, but the cannabis-infused beverages are going to be the up-and-coming thing. I mean, I, I'm not sure if they'll be blended with an alcohol, like a, oh, a cannabis no. wine, or if they're going to be just <laughs> straight THC. I don't know. That to me is a little scary. The edible thing, you know, smoking a joint, you can self-regulate, but the edible right. thing is really, you got to be careful. And, you know, I mean, doing that, man, I mean, even five mils for a lot of people is too much, you know, when it comes to an, uh, an edible, uh, much less 250, you know, that I'm right. saying some of the, I mean, it's just ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> That's the scary part for me. So where's the uh, predominant state right now for your tourism? Well, I mean, you know, we started, we launched originally in Colorado. And so, you know, people are still coming in. Uh, I would say that. And Uruguay is actually quite big internationally. Spain and Jamaica are, are getting there. And then um, Canada actually is coming on strong. So um, California obviously is, is right on the heels of, of Colorado and is really the juggernaut of the industry, you know, in all ways. You wouldn't so, happen to have any talks going on with the Tyson Ranch, would you? No, not yet. It's a, I mean, I, I would be open to it. It sounds like he's got a fun thing going. I certainly want to go visit. Yeah. <laughs> he might want to do the zip line thing, you know? I'm not going to try to keep up with him, though. I mean, I, I'm not going to smoke 40 grand of weed in a in a. No. Is that I went to Hemp Fest and I wasn't, I wasn't able to keep up. You know, I had some fun. How does that wait? I mean, really, 40 grand a month? I mean, yeah, I don't know. Right. <laughs> Maybe it's half. I mean, like. <laughs> <laughs> Unless well, he's giving it away. <laughs> Maybe he's just burning it like all day, you know, just like right. incense or something. Sure. It's going as you yeah. walk into the accommodation. Speaking of Hempfest, Sean, uh, have, you, have you made it at Hempfest out here or uh, you know, any other festivals? In, in Washington? I have not made that one. I need to make one, that one. It's yeah, because like the originals. What's that, Tom? How do you advertise then? Because we've talked about this and Miggy has weednews.co and he's always talking about the shadow ban because he's been a victim of it. And you said that just started in 2001, at least the domain uh, reservation was. Sure. You can't you know, social media, how do you, how do you market yourself? Well, you know, for a while, social media was working really well. We got, um, you know, we didn't have the, the hardcore sort of right at the beginning, we didn't have the hardcore regulation and that kind of got put on real quick. But at first we got out there quick on social media, but then it was just dead stop. And so now we kind of do, uh, I mean, we're hitting travel expos, we're hitting health and wellness expos. Um, we are doing a lot of festival um, type of work. We're on the ground. We're talking to people. We're, you know, guerrilla marketing with our banners. Um, we're just getting the word out as best we can. Right now, our big push is the East Coast because, you know, obviously Texas uh, was our big pull for Colorado and Massachusetts now legal. That's New York is the big pull. So we're really trying to 
do a lot of marketing out in, in mass and in the East Coast that are coming along DC. I mean, that's a huge untapped, you know, uh, source out there. And it's legal uh, in DC, right? What's that? It is. Yeah. Legal. Uh -huh. That's probably easier for you too, because you're in a hospitality industry. So, I mean, you're not trying to sell weed. You're trying to sell a place to smoke the weed. Absolutely. No, we, I mean, it is completely illegal to sell weed at, at a spot. So, I mean, an accommodation, you, you're gifting, you know, a joint or you're gifting an infused meal or you're gifting, you know, anything related to the, to the, to the herb. Or maybe it's just it. like, it's, it's, it's friendly. Like, you know, you could use it there in theory. Here's a map to the dispensary. Yeah. Well, well, there are those. So we do have places where, um, you know, you get, there's filters on the site. So you as a host can say, Hey, I'm, I'm fine with you smoking out on the porch and there's a dispensary around the corner or the, the, there are a lot that have the full gamut where you actually get there. There's a weed bar. There's a 420 happy hour. There's a cannabis yoga class waiting. There's a CBD infused massage. There's sushi and joint rolling classes. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of places will provide, um, you know, coupons to go to the nearest dispensary. Um, in Colorado, we have tours to Red Rocks. And, and in Colorado, you can actually in a tour van partake while you're driving. So so it's it's really like the people arrive get in the tour bus and within five minutes they have a joint in their hand. Then they go to a dispensary, buy way too much weed. Then they go to the, to the butt and breakfast where there's already weed waiting for them. <laughs> and they leave, have to leave all that weed behind. So then the accommodation owner has just piles of, of weed left. So they never have to actually buy anything. It's just left for them to pass it on to the next guest. It's funny you say that. I uh, visited my friends. Uh, do you know Radical Russ? No, uh-uh. Yeah, he's running a chain, uh, Delta Nine. He's a long time. Oh actor. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, and uh, I visited Delta Nine in Portland, and uh, he's like, "Yeah, here's some joints I'm gonna give you, but then here's some dabs that these guys left. Here's some flour that these guys left. It was, it was a sh more ton, more fucking weed than I have in my house." It's like, Too much. <laughs> you know, I mean, I think that our our business, you know, we don't we don't touch anything that has to do with the weed. We're an online site, so I think that what what we're seeing here is as the price goes down and down and down for the black market, for just the cannabis industry in general, the glut that's happening. I think that, you know, this is providing people another income source to, to, to stay sort of in something they know, but something legal and something that they don't have to, you know, be looking over their shoulder about, or, you know, trying to keep concealed and, and still staying up to date and modern with what's going on. Um, and making money as a as a as an accommodation owner. You know? So it sounds like you actually have uh, not just like an Airbnb where I'm going to put my apartment or my house. I mean, it sounds like you have like resorts and stuff that are listed on there. Just from what you've been describing, we do. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we have, like I said, I mean, we have farms in Jamaica. We have you know luxury estates in Denver, California. I mean, Spain. There's some really high end stuff. Have you ever I mean, used your own site to book a trip? Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, we say we do it. We kind of do a trade where, you know, we get quite a, we get about 10,000 hits a day on our site. Nice. And so we, we say, Hey, you know, if we're, if we need to go and we'd say I was in Spain and I was going to Spanibus, I would get in touch with the host and be like, Hey, we'll put your spot on the front page and trade for, you know, staying at your accommodation. So that's worked really well. It's kept the, the price down on travel. <laughs> That's right. Have you dealt with the uh, International Cannabis Conference, guys? Um, I mean, I know them. Yeah, I haven't really done many of those expos yet. I'm not, you know, I don't, I, I don't try to spend. If I, I learned really easy that the quickest way to go out of business quickly would be to spend five thousand dollars on a booth at every single expo going on. You know, oh, it's yeah. not feasible. So, oh, I just figured I it. a lot of times now I'm getting asked to speak at these things and. Oh. So that's that's really nice, um, but yeah, we're not really into spending five ten grand on a booth at a festival. That's not our thing, you know. At no, this point, it's 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 snowballing. We don't really pay for advertising. We're it's just kind of going now, you know. Oh well, yeah, because well, the reason why I was thinking with you and them being a perfect mix would be because uh, they're having a multi tour right now, where you know uh, Spain, France, Vancouver, yeah, uh, San Francisco. Uh, yeah, yeah, if you had B and B's in all those areas, yeah, you know, that'd be a great little yeah. like, twenty percent discount or something. Yeah. <laughs> I'll I'll them all like back yeah. backpacking trips that you can <laughs> through Europe, you know. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, 
So over your course of your uh, your business's history, have you uh, always just made like money from bookings or are you getting different revenue streams because you've been in, in the industry for so long now? Yeah, I mean, you know, so we we do get our primary income on bookings, but you know, we again we have the featured sites on our on our on our page. So, you know, if you're on one of the nine featured properties on our site, you're going to be you know, paying a little bit of a premium to get that location, but it, it definitely translates. Um, so yeah, and then, you know, just getting, I've been flown around to, I went to Berlin and Amsterdam, I spoke there, I've been to Miami, I've been all over the East Coast, to just fly, you know, people fly me to these hotel, I, a lot of hotel and tourism conferences, you know, um, places that I never would have ever imagined myself wow. being, um, you know, speaking in front of, you know, I mean, in Berlin, there was a couple thousand people, you know, and that was, that was, that was industry. It's amazing. Isn't it? Stone faced Germans about cannabis legalization. And they're like, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, how, I mean, you said there was, there was residences or something available in Germany. So if you're talking to these, um, you know, very, very buttoned down Germans that are so responsible that their country actually runs a budget surplus, um, <laughs> uh, how are they taking this, this concept of cannabis being legal and, and, and recreational? I mean, I don't know, you know, if you've been to Berlin, but Berlin is probably the most liberal city in the, on the planet. I mean, you know, coming from where it's come, it's, it's of course going to go that way, but um, it's, I mean, everyone is smokes weed and I mean, you're just walking down the street and you're constantly smelling weed burning. But in Berlin, it's not legal and it's very regulated. I mean, I have friends that are scared to get flyers for anything cannabis related mailed to them. You know, I mean, it's like the EU, you know, kind of looking yeah. down there, <laughs> looking, looking wow. at them like pretty hardcore over there. It's, it's interesting. Wow. Which is kind of funny if you think about like the older cultures with the more liberal stances and the more relaxed like, you know, the United States is the one that started this whole fucking thing. Like, you know, if you were to just point this out, be like, you're following the, the, the United States way, you know, this this had nothing to do with it. So, yeah. 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 Well, yeah, Jamaica probably had a little bit to do with that too, but yeah, definitely it's been the United Wait, States. Wait, I thought Jamaica had still not officially legalized cannabis, like have they have in in Colorado or in Washington or in Illinois. Isn't it still illegal? It's pretty much legalized. It's kind of a decriminalized, legalized. Uh, but when I went over there, I was at an expo there a couple of years ago, and literally I walked out of the airport, and there were people with baskets of colas, just like baskets like hey can what do you want me to do with this <laughs> <You know? Yeah. laughs> i mean so yeah i think it's pretty legal in jamaica at this point yeah know? that's fantastic yeah. yeah but it's kind of always been like that in jamaica i've heard about people doing trips there and they're like you know as soon as you walk off the plane they say hey here's a pipe for five dollars and i'll pack it for you with a bud that thing. right right well when we were driving to our accommodation the guy was like oh you want some cannabis i was like sure and he pulls off and you know, it goes down this road and there's a field and he basically just goes, chops a branch and hands it to me. And I'm like, well, I'm only here for a few days. It has to drop. Don't you have any that's already been like cured? <laughs> Are you sure that was right? I mean, he's like, make tea, make tea. I was like, All right. make tea. Yeah. Well, the question is, how was it? Oh, well, I made tea. It was great. <laughs> but uh, no, there was plenty of cannabis in Jamaica. I, I definitely didn't go without. Nice. Yeah, sure. <laughs> what did you do that's before? Great. Okay. Uh, I was going to say, like, th that's amazing. That's one of the things that I like about this industry is that it you're in an ancillary part to the industry, but even that has been growing so fast. And that's something we had talked about earlier. Like, you know, it's it, the cannabis industry right now is about fifteen billion dollars a year, and then if it's tripling to forty-five billion in the United States in five years your business is just going to continue to grow and there's going to be other ancillary businesses that are related to it that who knows what those are even going to uh, shape up to be. Yeah. I mean, everything, all the graphs are up and to the right, it's rolling in the right direction for sure. I mean, each, each month it gets better and better. So, I mean, that's a great, you notice that your, your revenues are, are increasing. What's that? Yeah, have you noticed that your revenues are increasing? Definitely, definitely on that. <laughs> he says, "Oh yeah, <laughs> it's, going it's going up." Yeah, and again, you know, I just keep saying that's you know, you look at these 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 farmers, you know, these multi generational farmers that have been up in say Humboldt, Mendo, Mendocino County in California, and you know places even in Colorado where you know they're getting left behind by you know big 
big canna, I guess, is what's coming in. And I, I just really think that these farms are really sitting in a place where they could they could promote themselves on butter breakfast as another income stream and get out of having to worry about, you know, selling a pound that's worth nothing anymore. Um, instead, focus on bringing people and educating people on the cannabis scene and, you know, providing an accommodation for them to learn. Yeah. So, a wonderful way to create their own brand as well. But uh, I'm not sure whose who's phone's ringing. But uh, anyone else hear that? I hear it too, but it's not me. Mm. Doesn't look like it's me. No, that's uh, <laughs> that's an interesting one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, who's, who's using a Windows machine? <laughs> hey, I, don't knock Windows. I got it. All right, but all right. So I'm gonna blame you, Mickey. Um, <laughs> but I could be wrong. I'm probably not, but I could be. Uh, so that, that's awesome. I mean, I, I'm glad that you're you're doing you know more business each year, and then you have this idea that you're going to be able to bring. Uh, the craft aspect to cannabis, because it really is a thing. Like you said, the big canna or like uh, MSOs, we, we call them here, like the multi-state operators, those people drive in a different lane in the Illinois rubric that's going to be coming online. I mean, 5,000 square foot flowering, that's like your 25 plant, you know, mm -hmm. uh, outdoor, even that'd be huge for, for outdoor. In, in Illinois, it's going to be grown indoors, so it'll be quite a few more plants, but only 5,000 square foot. Uh, and then the uh, the big operators get 210. So like, you know, hmm. interesting. Yeah, like 100 times larger than you. Well, not 100 times, but, you know, just <laughs> substantially larger than you. You're just in an entirely different league and you're not going to be able to compete. Yeah. So how do you differentiate yourself and create that brand awareness? Because if it was a destination like that where you're going to that farm and you're having a wonderful time, people are going to equate your brand of cannabis with that experience in that event that they had and they're gonna they're gonna seek it out if they can find Absolutely. it it's it's a lot like uh you know how mendocino and sonoma were in the early wine industry you know for that matter um it's you know like you're saying different brands um going educating people i mean that's how a lot of the big guys started in napa was like bringing people to the vineyard and showing them what was going on and they were the early ones in and they're still going you know so i, I do think that there's going to be a lot of room for craft the craft market in all of this and really it just seems like it's going to be a lot healthier <laughs> you know, are, you, are you guys going to offer so like bnb does the uh, experience packages i mm -hmm. mean we're talking about growers i mean uh your website just offers the uh, places to stay right but are you, you going to eventually like add like you know check out this tour it's good like it's happening right now. We're building out a you know a whole platform for that for the experience. The oh, experience. separate platform. Yeah. yeah, that's that's happening right now. You'll probably be seeing that in the next month or so coming live. So nice. Do you have yeah. a name for it? Already? It's just part of the butter breakfast experience. The oh, butter okay. breakfast experience. <laughs> <laughs> right on. I mean, yeah, it yeah. Was great. I, you know, it's like <laughs> tours are awesome. Like, like uh, we gave uh, uh, here in Washington. You know, everybody's trying to find their niche, and uh, I have a buddy who's doing media. And uh, he, he does, a, we have bus tours where you pick you up in a bus, everybody smokes in a bus and yeah. uh, dabs, consumes. Uh, we pick him up throughout different spots of Washington. Then we go on a drive. Uh, we stopped at a garden, uh, uh, took a tour there, jumped back on the bus, more driving. And that was a great freaking day. Yeah, it is. I mean, you know, and we're, we're getting a lot of people now that are doing these sort of high-end dinners where they're you know, bringing in a top chef from New York that's educated in microdosing with cannabis and then pairing with chocolate or pairing with wine and, you know, bands. And I mean, it's a real high end experience here. A friend of mine was just in Rolling Stone who is doing that. And I mean, she's she's killing it, you know, and people are coming in. It's like a VIP experience, you know, with cannabis. Yeah. And it's it's doing great. I mean, people want this, you know. But then doesn't that co create the issue with like uh, public consumption is easier when you're smoking it or inhaling it because you can control that dose. And also it, it wears off, you know, more quickly than if you are in, in consuming it. And like, you know, what if the person just isn't used to. Well, that's why you know, like 50 milligrams. Microdose is microdose. You, know, it's, you gotta, I mean, that's the educational and that's what I was saying. I mean, I wouldn't do any more than five mils at all, maybe even 2.5 mils in total, you know? I mean, yeah. I'm saying not you, Tom. Right. <laughs> you know, the general populace, right. not someone who's so yeah, yeah. You know, acclimated as it were. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I used to do that. I would make uh, my own, you know, capsules back in the day. And um, it was about the same time that that movie, The Wolf of Wall Street came out. 
And so, you know, we thought it was funny. So it's about five years ago now. And, uh, and that's when I was making these capsules. And so I would take one and, you know, I, I'd be, I'd be high, but I'd be fine. And then, uh, other people would take them and then they would wake up two days later, uh, and call me like as if it was my fault or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you were supposed to be their guide. <laughs> I said, it, you know, I'm, I'm all right on them. You'll be <laughs> the, the thing is, like, when you get that high, you kind of have to wait it out because you ate it. You know, that's the yeah. thing, you know, and for that me, can be a me, difficult lesson for people to learn. Yeah. The edible thing is for me, like a great sleep aid, you know, like, uh, yeah. you know, people are taking all kinds of things to go to sleep. I mean, really, like, five like 2.5 to 5 mils right before bed or like an hour before bed i mean and i'm just i have the best sleep ever you know and yeah, I don't, I don't get high. no you don't I mean, you just go to sleep you know yeah. just, and, and you, you relax and you're totally that's right. relaxed and you're not taking some nasty pharma drug you know that's right yeah that's yeah, the thing though that's what's really i think going to be driving it further so hopefully we can believe that 45 billion dollar number in five years because if people stop taking their Xanax, if people stop or reduce taking Tylenol and, and Advil and all those things, or Unisom, or any one of these pharmacological drugs that uh, cannabis might, especially with how deep the bench of the cannabinoids and the terpenoids are, mm -hmm. we don't know what we're going to develop because we're just getting, just now being able to start really experimenting with the plant. Yeah. You know? Did yeah, you see that, that, that uh, study came out yesterday from Harvard where they're, they're targeting pancreatic cancer with with um, flat, like the bioflavonoids from cannabis. Oh wow! Just came out yesterday. I just read about it. It's just like it was like number one story on Yahoo. You know, it's like yeah. I mean, that's and that's that's the hilarious thing that they've just been shooting themselves literally in the foot for the past eighty two years, and and us as well. I mean, that they just stopped all the science decades yeah. ago because in some newspaper somebody said a Mexican guy went nuts and killed some white women. You know? uh, that is bad. Oh God! How are we just getting you to 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 learn about this plant when the plant's been around for thousands of years, right? I mean, this is an unfortunate thing. That's where, like a conspiracy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I <laughs> still think CBD terrible. seemed like the biggest conspiracy because back in the day, I was like, "What?" You know, I, I never heard of it. And then, uh, but no, it, it turns out that that was the first cannabinoid really isolated, like back in 1940. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, only three years after it was legal, right? But, um, but even when THC was discovered, that was the one they clinged on to, like, oh, psychoactive. Right. Like, it's a scary word, but it really doesn't mean shit. Right. <laughs> and their, their lack of understanding of that chemical is still, and especially at the federal level, is still pervasive and evident when it comes to industrial hemp's line at 0.3 percent and only recognizing delta 9 THC and saying nothing about regular uh THCA because that those those nice colas that were fresh in Jamaica. I bet if we would have taken that, chopped it, thrown it into a, well, maybe don't wood chip it. I don't, don't denature the flower too much. And immediately tested a sample with like an HPL C, like the high pressure liquid chromatography, like they used to test hemp. I would estimate that it would have tested positive for hemp because most of that Delta nine crystal in there would have been in the, in the acid varietal, which that doesn't matter. The statute says, 0.3% or more Delta 9 THC. Yeah. Well, regardless going forward, I mean, the full spectrum, you know, all the chemicals that haven't even been investigated in this plant are oh, just, yeah. I mean, just, just even seeing the, the few that have and all the, all the benefits that have come from just the few that have, I'm pretty excited, you know, just to see. Oh, yeah. So it's like, great. You said part of your businesses was actually, um, I guess, medical tourism to a certain extent. I mean, the people have conditions and they are buying uh access to to cannabis medicine by using your site oh absolutely i mean you know they they see a they see i mean they're not going to go to a place in alabama and treat their kid for epilepsy you know i mean they're going to come to a rec state and i mean if your child is i mean the, it, the fact is is that this is working cbd is working for autoimmune conditions it's working for epilepsy it's working for all kinds of things and and soon to be discovered things i mean it's just unreal and so yeah for 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 people who go on our site, they're thinking, oh, I could go stay a month, you know, and give my kids some relief or give myself some relief and not have to worry about, you know, looking over my shoulder. It's legal, <laughs> you know? Right. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, that was the weirdest thing. Like, I have never been until this past weekend. Well, first off, I had never done a dab. That was an experience. But then, mm -hmm. second, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 
He didn't pass out. I give him that much. <laughs> <didn't pass> <laughs> uh, but there's no alcohol served at Hempfest. And so, um, you know, I had never seen so many people just hanging out and smoking cannabis publicly, openly, blatantly, oh, yeah. uh, right next to the cops. And like, you know, Miggy would joke, it's like, you know, Hempfest is kind of uh, a letdown when you get right up to it. And it's kind of boring, you know, because at the end of the day, everybody just packs up and goes home. <laughs> yeah, you know, the, the whole point of like this, this, the plant, the holistic opportunity that it offers to us is, which needs to be emphasized, I think, where we need to have choices. You know, uh, someone shouldn't have to leave Alabama to go treat their baby for something that's natural. You know, uh, why does it, there have to be a synthetic rid of, of a plant like why can't i just try tomatoes you know why can't i just see if vitamin c from orange helps me first before i uh start getting pills yeah you know? well the the reefer madness was shoved down you know society's throat from way back and i mean that that's a big part of it and then you know just the the i think the pharmaceutical companies have to get their hands in it enough to really make it go forward on a federal level i think that that you're going to see once the big pharma comes in and has control enough, then it's going to, you know, but then it's going to be regulated, but it's still, you know, that's when you're going to see more of a, you know, hands off kind of approach, I think by the federal government, but yeah, it's a, it's a cultural shift. I mean, it's like post prohibition, you know, it took a while for people not to think that drinking a beer, you know, for some, for some that it was, you know, going to infuse your body with demons, you know, yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know, um, and, you know, I mean, that's an extreme case, but that's what we're going to we're going through. And in Colorado, I mean, having been here since legalization, it doesn't take long for the shift to happen. You know, yeah. it, it's pretty like I mean, there's more dispensaries than Starbucks and McDonald's combined. In yeah, so, uh, I'd like to ask you that if you know off the top of your head, like, do you know how many dispensaries are in Colorado? I don't offhand, but I mean, I can tell you walking down the street in Boulder or Denver, you're going to, I mean, in one block, you're going to have four. Wow. Like five per block, yeah. you know. It's like I've, I've, I've looked at the number that they've limited in the state of Illinois, and I used like Colorado or Washington State because they, they have quite a few there too, and also in California. And I'm like looking at the numbers they've, they've provided for us in Illinois relative to the numbers that are out west. And I'm like, no. They're going to need to like multiply this by like three to five, depending on what state they would like it to be like, unless they want people waiting in line for cannabis for like 30 minutes, half, you know, 45. You know, just, you'd just be sitting in line at a weed store. Mm -hmm. You know what's nice, Sean, is uh, Tom actually got to see firsthand good policing and cannabis in action when uh, it was later that night. We went to an after party and uh, in front oh, yeah. of one of the clubs that we hang out or where the party goes or occur. Um, the dad bus was, was parked in front of the restaurant slash bar for attendees. And uh, there's a bunch of cops around the bus. And we're like, oh, shit, what's going on? Like, here comes a bunch of activists. We're going to check some shit out. And then it uh, turns out he was just on the curb. Oh, like, yeah. That was the whole thing. Get off the curb. Uh, <laughs> we don't care what's going on inside the party in that bus. We right. just want you off the curb. And what, what, that was in Washington? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it was uh, it was moments after uh, we were smoking a joint right next to the same police officer, oh, yeah. and um, uh, it was it was down the way from where the dab house was on the curb, right. obstructing people's paths. Evidently, was that the dabulence? Was it that? No, no, this was the lion pride. But yeah, uh, we have the dab doctor up here. <laughs> right. Dab doctor, huh? He's yeah. a, he's, he's he's a catering power. service. I, I think the juvenile aspect of how like the dabs were portrayed, it was it was very youth oriented i guess to say the, the least so I'm, I'm interested to see how dabs will turn out in illinois they aren't near as popular here but you know i'm a flower guy i'm a flower guy you know i mean the whole idea of like having to put a torch on something just seems a little oh these things had like rigs man they had like a car battery or something <laughs> you up to them, you had a heating element in this thing that looked like a chess piece that you put on it and and then they would look at me like i knew what i was doing when they're asking for how big of a dab i want and i'm like one, please. <laughs> Very small one, please. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a whole. I mean, that's a whole new thing. I, I personally haven't really. I've done. I think one dab in my entire life. So yeah, it's, that's that's yeah. And that was all I needed. Yeah. <laughs> right on. It's going to be that time, guys. But we do have a couple questions from some viewers. Uh, Cypress TK says, "What date is Congress returning? And is it is the Safe Act or whatever being pushed?" 
Uh, okay, Congress will get back after Labor Day, which is, I believe, Monday, May 4th. And so after that, they'll kind of, you know, come back into the area over time because, you know, trying to say, hey, be back at this time. Most of the people in Congress sometimes just won't even be there when Congress is in session. So eventually they will return this fall uh, and they'll get some stuff done because, as you know, the budget year ends on October 1st. So or September 30th, the new year starts on October 1st. So they have to kind of like do some stuff. Some of those things they have to do are funding the government so that we can continue to have that wonderful trillion dollar deficit that we have. And uh, to do that, hopefully they they really push two things. And this is going to be it's not just uh, normal that does their uh, conference and their their uh, lobby days on uh, September 8th and 9th. I think also the National Ca uh, Cannabis Industry Association. If you join that, 25 cents on your dollars is a political contribution. They'll also be lobbying for you. So they're really going to be pushing those two things, the Safe Banking Act. And if you see the Safe Banking Act pass, you know, getting stuck into the budget. And then there's this huge omnibus thing that goes and it keeps the government open. Uh, there may be what they call some CRs as a continuing resolutions. And then after that gets done, Hopefully it's the Safe Banking Act and then the entire Eastern Seaboard just just you know goes and, and our supply chain really, really starts to pick up because then you can actually bank cannabis. If that doesn't happen, hopefully what does happen is the Robacher Farr Amendment. Uh, I think now it's the Robacher Clintock Amendment. I'd have to see, um, as I believe Farr is no longer in Congress. Uh, and then that will expand the current defunding on the war on cannabis to uh, all state cannabis. Uh, because right now it's just medical cannabis is defunded. They'll they'll defund the rest of it, and hopefully then. Okay, cool. Yeah. And then Herb the Gift asked, any news on Illinois SB twenty twenty three? Will it be signed? Well, uh, I thought SB twenty twenty three. If it, if that's the bill that makes the Illinois cannabis pilot program permanent uh, and adds additional, um, and I thought that was the 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 bill. I haven't memorized every SB or or HB. That would just be ridiculous. But uh, I remember twenty twenty three. I think that was the one that made medical cannabis permanent in Illinois and added more conditions, including pain, so people can finally treat their pain with something besides opioids in the state of Illinois. Uh, I, that was already signed a couple weeks back. And so that one's already good, but you know, oh, cool. all right. Great. But Sean, thank you so much for coming by and telling us about your awesome growing business, which I am totally going to have to list my house on now because I, I don't want to like list it on Airbnb and get like disqualified or something. <laughs> I haven't seen cannabis friendly stuff on Airbnb. Yeah, there's nothing like getting to, you know, getting off the plane, getting to your spot and having a joint waiting for you. I mean, seriously, what more yeah. do you want? There you go. And I can probably charge a premium for it. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You'd be, you'd be one of our first time in Illinois. We look forward to hosting you. We'll put you on the front page. Yes. <laughs> a little bungalow in Peoria Heights. All right. It works, man. Cool. <laughs> awesome. And where do we find you? Where do we find Button Breakfast? It's just budandbreakfast.com, spelled uh, B-U-D-A-N-D-B-R-E-A-K-F-A-S-T.com. It's just how it sounds. Awesome. Yeah. Great. Great well, chat with you guys. guys. Thanks for coming yeah, on. Thanks, Sean. Sure. We'll be in touch. Hey, Tom. Yo. Uh, remember, I won't be on next week or the week after because I'll be taking my kid to college. Yeah. Ooh. What college? Uh, I'm going to Minnesota, St. Olaf. Nice. Good Minnesotan people. I'm not sure... He will probably be the wildest one there because he's from Seattle. And, and I've met the good people of St. Olaf. I thought, you were, gonna say, I thought you were going to say Oaksterdam. Jeez, you know. Oaksterdam. Uh, that'd be my dream. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, man. Well, uh, I'll see if I can find somebody else to co-host, but nobody will be able to replace you. Right on, man. All right, cool. Bye, everybody. See you guys. See you guys. Thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll see you next Wednesday. Make sure you like and subscribe. Lauren, you're awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks so much.